Today's assignment is going to be IXL section I9, rearrange multivariable equations, aka also known as literal equations. In your algebra class, they probably refer to these as literal equations. They're basically equations that have a lot of variables in them. In fact, they may only have variables in them. And the way you solve them, which I'll show you in a second, is the same way. You do the exact same thing you do as when the equations have numbers, except they're going to have letters or variables in them. Okay. Esta sección es básicamente resolviendo ecuaciones que tienen muchos variables en la ecuación. Muchas de las ecuaciones van a tener solamente variables, pero la manera que se resuelven es igual que se hace cuando tienen números, que le voy a enseñar ahora. Okay, so, first example, they want you to solve for S, all right? So that tells you what letter they want you to get by itself. You got to rearrange the pieces to get the S by itself, okay? Tenemos que resolver para S. Eso me dice que tengo que mover las piezas o los términos que están en la ecuación para coger la letra S sola en un lado de la ecuación. Okay, and the, this part over here is just a fancy way of saying that your answer is going to have Q and R in it. But S is what you're going to get by itself. All right, so to get S by itself, I got to get rid of this Q from this side of the equation. I'm going to get rid of this Q by doing the opposite of adding Q, which will be subtracting Q from both sides. Okay, para coger la S sola, tengo que quitar esta Q de aquí. Lo voy a quitar haciendo lo opuesto de sumar Q, que sería restar Q de los dos lados. Okay, so on the right hand side of the equation, Q minus Q cancels out because the same number, remember that the variable represents a, an unknown number. But if they have the same letter, that means it's the same number. It represents the same number. And a number minus that same number equals zero. Now, on the other side, you cannot combine R minus Q because they are not like terms. They have different variables. Therefore, you just write it like this and you're done. That's your answer. S equals R minus Q because you cannot combine that. I'll say it again. I have this. I'm trying to get S by itself. So I get rid of Q by doing the opposite of adding Q, which would be subtract Q from both sides. Here, it cancels out. Here, I cannot combine that because there are different variables. So all I do is write R minus Q equals S. Okay? Esto no se puede combinar, así que simplemente lo escribo. R menos Q. S es igual a R menos Q. Y ya terminé. Eso es mi solución. All right, moving on to the next example. It's also easy. Este también es fácil. All right, here they say solve for V. So they want you to get the V by itself. All right, that means the first, what I got to get rid of is the W. Let me write it over here, guys. So, okay, to get rid of W, I got to subtract both sides by W. Right here, W minus W cancels out. So I got V equals, the equal sign is right here still, U minus W, except I cannot combine those. All I could do is write them next to each other. And I'm done. There's my answer. V equals U minus W. Ahí está mi respuesta. Porque esto no se puede combinar. Same thing, except they added one more letter. Okay, here they want us to solve for X. Let me write the problem over here. W equals X plus Z minus Y. Okay, so I want to get X by itself. So let me change the color of my pen just to make it clear what I'm going to do. All right, to move Z from the right to the left, I do the opposite of adding Z, which will be subtracting Z. And to get rid of the Y, I do the opposite of minus Y, which is plus Y. And whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other side. Let me just write them like right here, because I'm not going to be able to combine them anyways. Okay, para quitar el más Z, tengo que restar Z. Para quitar, o mejor dicho, para moverlo para el otro lado. Para mover el menos Y para la izquierda, tengo que hacer la operación opuesta, que sería sumar Y. Y lo que se le hace a un lado de la ecuación, también se le tiene que hacer a la otro, el otro lado de la ecuación. Okay? Nada de esto se puede combinar porque no son términos iguales. Son variables diferentes. Lo único que se puede hacer es escribir. Pero no se puede simplificar más que esto. You cannot simplify it any further than this. 
So there's my answer. And I'm sure somebody's going to ask this. The order of these letters does not really matter. Okay? I could have, like, if I write it like this, it's also correct. And if I write it like this, it is also correct. Let me write it all three ways. All three of these ways are correct, and IXL will accept all three of those answers. Okay? So they are, they are all correct. Notice the minus sign stays in front of the Z. Z is, it's minus Z, and if I put it in the front, it's negative Z. It means the same thing. In all three cases, the minus sign stays in front of the Z, or the negative sign stays in front of the Z. The W is positive, the Y is positive. All right? Se puede escribir la respuesta de las tres maneras. Las tres también, y IXL acepta los, las tres respuestas. Pero se tiene que fijar que el signo negativo se mantiene delante de la Z en todos los casos. All right, the problems get, this one's, this one's easy. They get more interesting in a second. Uh, you know what, this one's too easy. Let me, let me move on to not waste time to a different example. This is also too easy. There, I just wrote the answer just so you can see it, but it's too easy. Let me go to, all right, let's look at this one, which is which involves multiplication. All right, so first of all, whenever you have numbers or letters written next to each other without any sign in between them, that's multiplication. All right, this means multiplication. This means multiplication. This means W times U. This means X times V times Y, okay? Cuando vean letras escritas una al lado del otro, En una ecuación, eso quiere decir multiplicación, ¿ok? Esta, este variable por este variable y estos tres variables se están multiplicando uno por el otro, ¿all right? So, they want us to solve for V. I got to get V by itself. So, that means I got to get X and Y to the other side. Let me write it over here. W, U equals X, V, Y. Okay, since this is multiplication, I got to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division, to get rid of them or to move them to the other side. Como esto es multiplicación, para mover uno, estos variables para el otro lado, tengo, tengo que hacer lo opuesto de multiplicar por X, Y, que sería dividir por X, Y. The opposite of multiplying by X and Y would be dividing by X and Y. So on the right hand side, these cancel out. Because when I divide x divided by x, I get 1. So there's an invisible 1 here. And 1 times v is v. So that's why you don't write the 1. Same thing here. y divided by y is 1. And 1 times v is 1. I'm sorry. <laughs> and 1 times v is v. So you don't write the 1, okay? Cuando divido estos números, te da el 1. Y 1 por cualquier variable, te da ese variable. Así que, por eso es que no, no se escribe. On this side... Same as before, you cannot divide that because they are not like terms. I cannot simplify that. So all I do, uh, there's my answer, okay? You could either write it using this, like if you press this, you could put W, U on the top and X, Y on the bottom, or you could avoid pressing that and just writing it like this in parentheses. They're both correct. You have to put the parentheses though if you write it like this. Because if you just write it like this, this is wrong. If you just write it like this, it's a little unclear. Like, do you mean, like, it could be interpreted as saying W times U divided by X times Y. When you put it like this, it makes it clear that you're saying W times U and whatever that gives you divided by X times Y. So if you write it like this, you got to put the parentheses. Or you could just use this button and put W, U on the top and X, Y on the bottom without parentheses. Okay? Um, la respuesta se puede escribir uh, usando este botón, escribiéndolo así. O si quieren evitar usar este botón, también se puede escribir de esta forma y IXL lo acepta. Pero si lo, si lo escriben de esta forma, lo tienen que poner dentro de parentheses. Porque si no, déjame quitar esta parte de aquí. Si no escriben los paréntesis y lo escriben de esta forma, estoy casi seguro que AXL lo va a mar marcar mal. Porque eso se puede interpretar como w, w por U dividido por X por Y. 
si lo escribe así, está siendo más específico que primero se multiplica estos dos y el resultado se divide por el producto que te da cuando multiplica estos dos variables. Okay? All right, here's another one where we got to solve for n. Solve for n. All right, so again, this is all multiplication. Esto es multiplicación. So if I get want to get rid of it, I got to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. Para quitar esto, si esto es en multiplicación, tengo que hacer la operación opuesta, que sería división. Since I want n by itself, I got to divide by rt, both sides. Como quiero coger la n sola, tengo que dividir los dos lados por rt. This cancels out. And here's my answer. Once you get the hang of it, you can do a mental math. A lot of these. Um, again, if you're going to write it without that, it has the little blue button. I just didn't put it in the picture. When I took a picture of IXL, the problem in IXL. And in this case, I didn't put the blue button. But trust me, it'll be there. You could write your answer like that. Or you could write your answer like this. They're both correct. Okay, se puede escribir la respuesta de estas dos formas, las dos también. Okay, I'll do like one more. And you're gonna, this is something that comes up a lot in math, like little equations like this where you gotta rearrange them. So solve for W, solve for W, here's W. Okay, by the way, notice this is a cursive L and they have the button for the cursive L right here, okay? Fíjense que esta, como está escrita la letra L, uh, en estos momentos no me recuerdo la palabra para cómo se dice eso en español. Pero aquí está el botón para, cómo se, para esa L. Tienen que usar este botón. All right, so I want to solve for W. This is multiplication. So I'm going to move the L to the other side and divide. So I, I would use this button and put the A on the top and the L, the cursive L on the bottom. Okay, simplemente mover la L y ponerlo debajo porque de multiplicación, como esto es multiplicación, para quitar esta L se divide los dos lados. I'm dividing both sides by the lower, by the cursive L. All right, and, I'm, and that's what I'm getting. That's my answer. And there I'm showing you how I wrote my answer. Okay, let's look at this one because it has a negative sign in it. Which is not a big deal, but just in case. All right, so it says solve for r. Solve for r. Um, all right, so the first thing I'm going to do, let me write it over here. This is all multiplication. So the first thing I would do is let's get rid of the t by dividing both sides by t. Okay, primero voy a quitar la t, dividiendo los dos lados por t. I'm going to do it like a slow way, and then I'll tell you a faster way that you could do it. Okay, lo voy a explicar de una manera despacita, despacito, y después una manera más rápida. Okay, so if you do this, the T's cancel out. And I have S over T equals negative R. Now, I still want to get rid of this negative sign. Quiero quitar el signo negativo. Okay, so you can think about it as either divide both. Uh, you know what, let's do it this way. Remember, there's an invisible one here, okay? Recuerden que hay un número, que hay un uno invisible aquí. Así que puedo pensar de, ah, uh, you know what, never mind, because I just remembered there's a fraction here. Let me not say it that way. Déjame no explicarlo de esa manera, porque hay una fracción aquí y se van a confundir. Let me say it a different way, okay? I got that. All right, so the easiest way to explain how to get rid of that negative sign is multiply both sides by negative one. La man manera más fácil de pensar es multipliquen los dos lados por negativo uno. That'll turn this to positive r and this entire thing to negative s over t. A common question I'll get is, Mister, do I put the negative sign with the s, with the t in the middle? The correct answer is that they're all correct. Uh, the entire thing is negative. The most correct way to write it, I would say, is in the middle or on the top. However, I tested this out on uh, IXL, and it accepts it whether you put it on the top or on the bottom. It accepts your answer, all right? But the most correct way to write it is to either put it in the middle or on the top, all right? El signo negativo se puede...
bueno, primero que nada se debe poner o en el medio o con el número arriba de la fracción. Pero la ma manera más correcta es ponerlo en el medio, porque la fracción entera es negativo. Pero yo chequeé y en AXL se te deja poner el signo negativo con la S o con la T y te lo va a marcar bien de las dos maneras. Ok, so, um, and just one more, one more thing. Another way you could have gotten rid of this is just the quicker way. The quickest way you could have gotten rid, rid of this is divide both sides by negative T. Ok, la manera más rápida de quitar, mover los dos sería dividir los dos lados por negativo T. Right, you can think about it as the T's cancel out and the negative ones or the negative signs cancel out and your answer would be this. Alright, so I would write it either because I, I don't think it lets you put it in the middle. So I would write it like this. I would write my answer like that. Or if you use that blue button like this. But again, if you put the negative sign with the T, it'll still mark it right. Okay, so they're both correct. That's how I put it, and I got it right. All right. Okay, so let's look at this one. I'm going to do it the fast way now, okay? Solve for P. All right, so I got this Q equals negative R S P. All right, so what I'm going to do to just do the whole thing in one step hold on, uh, is divide both sides by negative R S. That's the quickest way to think about it. Okay, la manera más rápida de pensar de esto es dividir los dos lados por negativo RS. That way, on the right, all this cancels out. Todo esto se cancela. So I got P equals, and again, the whole thing is negative. But when you write your answer, I would write it, I would put it on the top. But if you put it on the bottom, it's correct as well. All right? P equals negative Q over RS. Okay. Well, um, listen, I think when I put this, I, I didn't mean this to include this picture, but uh, I was just reminding myself that I was checking to see if I put the negative sign on the bottom, would it mark it correct? And it did. Um, I think I made it look overly complicated there, right? And I don't want to, I'm too far into the video to go back, all right? I was just checking, will it accept that answer? And it did. Aquí estaba chequeando si IXO acepta esta respuesta y sí, lo acepta. Pero creo que lo hizo lucir demasiado complicado. The easiest way to, that I would have written that answer if I were a student is to just write this. That would be the easiest way to write the answer, okay? Or, of course, if you use the blue button, it would be like this, Okay. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to include this slide. I hope I didn't confuse anybody. Even though that is correct, what I wrote there. I was just checking. Okay, la manera más fácil de escribir la respuesta sería así o así. No quise, no me di cuenta que incluí, incluí esta, esta foto de... Eso era yo que estaba chequeando para ver si IXL acepta esa respuesta también y si lo aceptó. Pero la manera más, más fácil de escribir la respuesta sería una de estas dos maneras. All right, um... Solve for u. Solve for u. So uh, let me write it over here. Sorry, I didn't mean to write that. So if I want to get u by itself, divide both sides by negative tv. Negative tv. Tv is pretty negative. So that's that's a true statement there. <laughs> okay. Si quiero coger la u sola. La manera más rápida es dividir los dos lados por negativo TV. Okay, so over here this cancels, cancels, cancels. So I got U equals, the whole thing is negative, okay? And to write my answer, either use the blue box or, or write it like this. They're both correct, although if you write it like this, you got to use parentheses. Um... Si lo escriben de esta forma, tienen que usar paréntesis. Si usan la, la, el botón azul, no es necesario, se puede escribir así. Y poner el signo negativo arriba o abajo, los dos lo do están bien. I, I take it back. In this case, I guess maybe you don't have to put paréntesis. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, without paréntesis, it's fine, too.
Okay. Um, let me move ahead because so far the, I, I'm doing the same type of example. Let me move on. All right. All right. Now one that has division. Solve for d in terms of r. So I got to solve for d. This one's super easy. Okay. It's not being fussy. I mean, mental math, you just move the 2 and put it there. But let me explain it the correct way first. Okay, to get D by itself, I got to get rid of the 2. This is dividing by 2. So the opposite of dividing by 2 would be multiplying both sides by 2. The opposite of dividing by 2 would be multiplying both sides by 2. Okay, para quitar el 2, aquí dice dividir por 2. Lo opuesto de dividir por 2 sería multiplicar por 2. Si multiplico los dos lados por 2, eso quita el 2 de la derecha y la respuesta sería D igual a 2R. Okay? Obviously, the faster way is just move the 2 and put it there. You can do it mental math. It's not necessary to write all this out. So, if you get that, do it the fast way. Don't do it the slow way. Okay? Obviamente, para muchos de ustedes, la manera más rápida, más rápido de hacer eso, eso sería mover el 2 y multiplicarlo con la R y ya. Eso se puede hacer... Me, eh, en la mente sin escribir nada de esto right here same thing ok aquí es la misma cosa alright so um, solve for B well actually wait it's the same thing but there's one more step involved ok la misma cosa pero con un paso adicional ok first of all ok this one let's look at it a second if I want to get B by itself the first thing I gotta do is get it out get it like a, get it normally get it to let me say this better. Guys, sorry, I'm making this video pretty late and I've had a long day. I'm exhausted. Um, okay, the first thing I got to do is remove this B from the bottom of the fraction. So I'm going to do that by moving it over here as multiplication, like this. The long way of explaining that is that I'm multiplying both sides by B. I'm multiplying both sides by B. On the right side, it cancels out, and on the left side, I have B times C. Okay? Uh, lo primero que tengo que hacer es mover la B para que no esté en una fracción, para coger la, para empezar a coger la B sola en este lado. Okay, now the next step is to move the C to the other side by dividing both sides by C. El próximo paso es mover la C para este lado, dividiendo los dos lados por C. I'm dividing by C because that's the opposite of multiplying by C. So, just to repeat, just to repeat, first step is move B over here, and you got that. Now move C over here and put it on the bottom of A. Alright, so B equals A divided by C. Solve for F in terms of T. So I got to get F by itself. This is just like the one I just did. Okay, este igualito que el que acabamos de hacer. So first thing I'm going to do is move the f to the right and I'm going to have f times t equals 1. Now move the t to the right and put it beneath the 1 and you're done. That's your answer. f equals 1 divided by t. Okay, let's look at this one. Um, Alright, this one I got to point out something very important. So please listen. If not, you're going to be messaging me about how, how do you ask me how to, how to do this type of problem, okay? Esta sí que quiero que me pongan atención porque esta es diferente y si no ponen atención, a lo, creo que no van a saber cómo hacerlo. All right, so look. We got to solve for x, all right? First, let's do the easy part that you already, that you should. Now, you know what? Let's first get rid of the fraction. Let's first get rid of the fraction out of the way, okay? Primero voy a quitar la fracción. Miren como lo quito. Okay, listen. This word, this is super useful. It comes up a lot, trust me. Um, the way to get rid of this fraction is to multiply both sides by its reciprocal. Multiply both sides by its reciprocal. In case you don't remember what a reciprocal is, I'll put some examples here. A reciprocal is this. If I have 4 over 5, the reciprocal is 5 over 4. If I have 2 over 3, the reciprocal is 3 over 2. All you're doing is flipping the fraction upside down. That is the reciprocal. <laughs> I hope I spelled that right. Reciprocal. Pretty sure I did. 
Okay, um, so I'm gonna to whenever you want to get rid of a fraction in an equation, you multiply both sides by its reciprocal. Actually, let me say that better. Whenever I want to get rid of a fraction and move it to the other side, the way to get rid of it is to multiply both sides by its reciprocal. I'm telling you that is super useful and it will simplify a lot of problems throughout the year in algebra. Trust me on that. I'll keep repeating it, but but it's super important and super useful. All right, let me just say it in Spanish and th then I'll do it, okay? Siempre, esto, esto lo usan mucho, se, se usa mucho en álgebra, okay? Um, así que es muy importante. Si yo quiero quitar un, una fracción de un lado de la ecuación, la manera más fácil de hacerlo es multiplicar los dos lados de la ecuación por el recíproco de esta fra fra fracción. Un recíproco es pon simplemente poner la fracción al revés. Ok, aquí puse dos ejemplos. Alright, so, the reciprocal of 1 over W is W over 1. And I'm going to multiply both sides by W over 1. Ok, so on this side, this cancels out. Now on this side, W over 1 is the same as W. Because, you know, just like 2 over 1 equals 2. And 5 over 1 equals 5, W over 1 equals W, because anything divided by 1 equals that same number, ¿ok? Así que esto, W dividido por 1, te da W. So now I got that. Ok, now we're solving for X, so my last step is divide both sides by V. And here's my answer, okay? X equals W, U divided by V. X equals W, U divided by V. Here we go again, same type of situation, okay? La misma situación. All right, so. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by its reciprocal. Lo primero que hago es quitar esa fracción multiplicando los dos lados por el reciprocal. This cancels out. This is the same thing as T. Esto es lo mismo que T. So I'm going to get this. I'm still trying to solve for U. So divide both sides by V. Now I'm done. U equals TW divided by V. Okay, let's look at this one. Solve for V. Okay, so X equals... Let's first get rid of the fraction. Vamos primero quitar la fracción. Okay, and the way I'm going to get rid of it is multiplying both sides by the recipro reciprocal of negative 1 over W, which will be negative W over 1. You know what, let me give myself more space, okay? Let me write it with more space. All right, so multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is negative W over 1. By multiplying this side by negative W over 1, we're going to get rid of the negative sign and move it to this side. All right, so this is going to equal negative WX equals... This cancels out. VU. Now I'm still trying to solve for V. So divide both sides by U. So V equals, this is my answer right here. Alright. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. I'm going to do this one and this will be my last example. Because uh, by now they're all the same. I've covered all the different examples. Este es el último ejemplo. All right, so to get rid of this, multiply both sides by its reciprocal. Okay, that's the first thing I'm going to get rid of, the fraction. Lo primero que quito es la fracción, multiplicando los dos lados por el reciprocal. So negative R over 1. I'm sorry, I made the same. Let me give myself more space because it just looks, I feel like I'm going to confuse you guys if I leave it so close together.
All right, so right here, this cancels out. So now I have last step is I'm um, trying to solve for R. Oh, actually, this one is different, right? I, I really wasn't paying attention to what letter I was solving for it just yet. But in this one, I did have to solve for, I did have to get R by itself by moving it over here. Okay, so now I could get rid of this by doing dividing both sides by negative Q. All right, if I divide both sides by negative Q, here's my answer. R equals negative SP over Q. Okay, um... I'm gonna do that one one more time because I feel like like maybe you guys didn't may may need that one again because I could see that one being tricky. That one probably won't come up till the end, and it'll have you guys. When I said it out, All right. So since we got to solve for r, and I'm gonna show you a slightly different way that you could have done it. What I could have done slightly differently is. I could have just multiplied by the reciprocal of 1 over r without without moving the negative sign. I could leave the negative sign over here because r that will end up moving r over here and keeping r positive. Okay, so you could have done it like this as well. Okay, no era necesario en este caso multiplicar por negativo r sobre 1 porque como yo quiero coger r positiva en un lado no era necesario mover el signo negativo, que es lo que hice la primera vez. Se puede hacer de las dos maneras. All right, so anyway, so um, over here I'm going to get RQ equals the negative sign is still here, but the R canceled with the R and the one with the one. So now I got negative SP and uh, solving for R, so now divide both sides by Q. So R equals negative SP over Q. R equals negative SP over Q over Q. And I apologize earlier I said about using the parentheses, but I apologize. That's not necessary. You don't have to put the parentheses. So you could just write it like this, okay? Alright, so that concludes uh, the examples and your assignment once again is IXL section I9. Remember you have to get to one hundred points.